Hello everybody! I found a cool new tool, which is called Clockwork. It's an open source tool, which lets you um, trigger certain transactions in the future, depending on certain triggers. And But in the use cases, they didn't have gaming. So I thought I'd build a little game around it. Um, it's an idle game, which uh, it's called Lumberjack. And it will uh, collect wood over time uh, every 10 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is we initialize our thread uh, and the game data account. And here you can see already that every 10 seconds, I will get one wood from this little lumberjack here. And how this works is that um, Clockwork creates uh, a thread. So basically, we create the thread. And then Clockwork has this worker ne network, which takes the sol from our thread, where we transfer some sol in. And then it uses the sol to trigger transactions on our program. And uh, we can paste the thread ID here into this Clockwork tool. And then we can already look what's happening here. So we can see that every 10 seconds, this thread is performing some transactions. So let's look at these. And here we can see that this transaction is giving us some wood. So it's calling the onThread tick instruction on our program. And here on the top, we can see that um, our thread paid 0 0.00006 sol for this. So this is a little bit more than a normal transaction would cost. And the reason for that is that 0 0.00001 sol are getting paid to the worker network for performing these transactions. And you can actually run your own worker if you want to make some money with it. So you can like run your own worker and then your worker would perform these transactions where well, you need to have a geyser plugin uh, on your validator, but you can do that. And now, um, yeah, let's look at this um, worker and see what else it does. So we can see there's tons of transactions that it does because a bunch of people are using it already. So we can just have a look what these are doing. This one, for example, is um, the 8 wood instruction from our program. This is a 7 wood from our program. This is as well. So I think I looked at the wrong one. So let's look at this worker here. So let's just open a few of these transactions and see what they are actually doing. You can, this one, for example, is moving a mega piece. So this also looks like some kind of game, maybe. This one as well. So, and this one as well. 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 So there's, uh, but there's like lots of different uh, programs using this already. So let's look at how this works. So in the meantime, we already collected 16 wood. So what I can do now is I can just take 10 of these wood and transfer them to convert them to gold. And then I can use this gold later to uh, upgrade a lumberjack. But first, let's look at the code of how this actually works. So this is an anchor program, and I created the Solana Dapp scaffold again. So you can just uh, write npx Solana create d app and then your name for example idle game and this will conveniently create you an anchor program and um, next.js client so you can use this to <clears throat> easily get you started uh, for building something and now let's look at this code here um, this is written in anchor like i said and on the top we have the game data struct so we have an authority we have wood we have the amount of lumberjacks we currently have then we have gold, we have the teeth upgrades, because if you upgrade your teeth, then you get better wood, and then you get more gold for the wood that you're selling. And then we have uh, have updated add here. This is, um, we set it always to the current Unix timestamp to be able in the client to calculate when you would get the next wood. Then we have some error codes here. Uh, you don't have enough wood, you don't have enough gold. And then here we have the balancing. So first we have like wood per cell. So you need 10 wood to sell wood basically. And then you have, you get five gold for that and you get another, this is the multiplier, two times the teeth upgrade um, on top. So if you have a teeth upgrade of five, then you would get 15 gold for 10 wood. And then you, here we have the cost for the teeth upgrade. We have the cost for buying a new lumberjack. And then we have here the thread tick time in seconds. So we want our three, uh, our tick to tick every 10 seconds. 
And then we have some seeds here. And now in the initialize function, let's look at how this thread is actually created. So first we set some default values in our game data. Like we want to have one lumberjack shopping wood and we have teeth upgrade one and we set the uh, game data authority to the payer. In this case, this would be our backpack wallet. And then we set the updated add time to the current time. Then here we create the instruction that the thread will call on our program. So for that, we need to pass in the accounts in this case, it's a thread tick accounts, and we need to pass in the instruction data. So let's first look at the thread tick accounts. This is our game data account. This is uh, derived from the seed game data and our game data authority. So in this case, our backpack wallet. Then we have the thread PDA and we have the thread authority. And thread authority is also a PDA, which is derived from our game data authority. And the thread is derived from thread ID and our thread authority PDA. So, and now let's look at the instruction. So the instruction is here, where is it? Um, on thread tick. And on thread tick, so every 10 seconds, this worker network will call this instruction. And all we do is we um, add some wood to the wood field in our game data. So in this case, we always add the amount of lumberjacks. So if you have one lumberjack, you get one wood. If you have two lumberjacks, you get two wood. And then we set the updated time to the, to the current time. So this is everything that the thread actually does on our program. And now let's have a look uh, on when this is triggered. So Clockwork um, provides you a bunch of different triggers. What we did here is we used the cron annotation. So um, how this works is um, here you can see the different cron triggers. So the easiest is to just look at the examples, actually, because they're quite complicated to figure out. So for example, what you can do is you can um, fire your thread every Wednesday in the month of March at 10 p.m., for example. And yeah, what you could use this, for example, for is you could uh, start certain events in your game. So we could say like every Wednesday for 24 hours, everyone in the game gets double the amount of wood. It's like the super wood event. Or you could also use it for staking, for example. Like you take your NFT, you pass it, put it in the program, and then you say every week, everyone who's staked with this program gets 100 tokens or whatever. So the possibilities are basically endless. Uh, let's continue in the code here. Um, the next thing we do here is we create the thread. So this is basically a cross-program invocation to the clockwork program. And uh, what we put in is we put in the program, uh, the clockwork program, and then we put in the thread create accounts. So this would be the payer, the system program to create the thread. Then we put in the thread and the authority. And the signer will be um, the string thread authority and the payer. So the nice thing here is that the payer is actually the owner of this thread. So the player could, whenever he wants, he could pause the thread, he could... Um, stop the thread and get his soul out of the thread again. But you already see that this might not be the perfect solution for building an idle game because it, of course, costs a bunch of soul. Like every transaction, every 10 seconds will cost 0 0.00005 soul, actually six. And 1 million transactions would cost you five soul, usually. And if you use this worker um, network, then it actually would cost you six soul because the worker network takes a little fee. Um, but for a game like this, like, uh, or as an example, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a great tool that you can use. You could also use it, for example, uh, if you have like a big map in your game, then uh, where people run around off that you could use it to every 30 seconds, um, spawn some random treasuries on the chest, for example, on the, on the board. The next thing we have here is our, um, the amount of soil that we transfer into this thread. So this um, sol is used to pay for the fees, and if the account is empty, then the threads will fail. So you need to fill it up with some sol again then afterwards. Yeah, and this is already um, the creation of the thread, actually. Like we put in the trigger here, the thread ID, 
And all the other functions here are just uh, normal anchor functions uh, that control the game. So, for example, I can trade wood for gold. Here is a little check if I have enough wood. If I don't have 10 wood to sell, then it would fail. And then afterwards, we just um, subtract the wood that you need to sell from the wood. And we give the player some gold depending on his teeth upgrade. And then here you can upgrade your teeth if it just costs some gold. And you can buy another lumberjack. This will also cost gold. And then you get here another lumberjack added. And let's go back to our program if we already have enough uh, gold, maybe. So we have 53 wood already. So let's trade some more wood for gold. And now we have 14. And I think we need two more. We need 25 gold to upgrade our lumberjack. So now we have 28. So now if we buy another lumberjack, now we have two little lumberjacks here chopping wood for us. So and let's see if we in the end maybe have enough gold to upgrade his teeth as well. So in the meantime, we're going to look at the client code. Um, what we do in the client is let's first go to the init instruction. So when we click on init, that was the very first thing that we did. Um, we create a, a new thread. So we call initialize on our program and we put in the thread ID. The thread ID is just a um, string that identifies uh, our, uh, our thread PDA. And this thread PDA has an authority saved, which is our wallet. And this can later be used to like close the thread or pause it or so on. Then the rest of the accounts is just the payer, our backpack wallet, then the system program to create the account the clockwork program, then the thread address, the thread authority, and the game data PDA. And then we just send the transaction off. Let's now look at how these um, are created. So this is an effect which is triggered every time the public key changes. And in this uh, effect, I create the new the PDAs. So the game data PDA is derived from the game data string, the public key, and the idle game program ID. This is just as usual, like you saw in the other games as well. Then for the thread ID, we just take game data and the public key. So you might want to go to eight here, so you don't have any uh, conflicts. But I think it's per user anyway, so probably it doesn't really matter. Then we set the thread ID. The authority is uh, the string authority and the public key. This one is the authority of the thread. So the, this one will be able to change the thread. And then we have the thread address. And then we set these. And uh, yeah, all the other things in here are actually um, only to normally interact with the anchor program, like the upgrade of the teeth, for example. Maybe let's look at one more. Upgrade teeth is just upgrade teeth. And here we only need the game data and the signer. So this is basically here just a game action. There, all we need is just the game data and the signer. And then maybe what we could still look at is how this um, timer is calculated. So this is an effect um, that uh, has an interval which every second calculates the new time. So it just takes the last uh, timestamp from the program. In this case, we need to get the block time. So this is uh, uh, on-chain time. We can't just use date time now. And then we take this timestamp and we subtract the last login time or the last updated time from the thread. And then we just set the next energy here. And on the bottom, we then count this counter down. So uh, yeah, now we have enough wood. We can, uh, we can sell some more. But um, I think you can just try it out yourself. So it's um, it's deployed. The program is open source. So you can try it out. Um, I think the possibilities, uh, what you can build with this, are kind of uh, endless for games. So you could, for example, if you have like a strategy game, you could trigger an automatic update on the program as soon as the building is finished. Or you can uh, spawn random monsters on the map with this and all the clients just need to update themselves. So um, yeah, I would recommend you to try this out. And um, I will put the comments to uh, the, the links to the repository and to Clockwork in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, let's put them in the comments and uh, I will try to answer them in the next days. See you guys next time. Bye bye.